welcome back. In this week's lesson, we're invited to consider an endurance foot race as a good metaphor for this life journey we call the Christian faith. We're back in the book of Hebrews. We're in chapter 11, and we'll start by reading our scripture text this morning, which starts with verses 24 through 26, and then we'll jump over to verse 32 and take that all the way out to the second verse of chapter 12. Read along with me, if you will. By faith, Moses, when he was grown up, refused to be called a son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to share ill treatment with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He considered abuse suffered for the Christ to be greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking ahead to the reward. And what more should I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Japheth, of David, Samuel, and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured, refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death. They were sawn, sawn, sawn in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, persecuted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves and holes in the ground. Yet all these, though they were commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better so that they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. So the writer of Hebrews is speaking to an audience of Jewish Christians somewhere between 65 and 70 AD. And this is a group that is under duress. They've been persecuted, they're suffering, they're experiencing extreme hardships, and they're contemplating a return to Judaism, which they believe will make life easier for them. And it's to this audience, this original audience, that the writer says in, in chapter 12, verse 1, he says, let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us. So the writer acknowledges that the effort that's going to be expanded would be similar to that of a endurance race, a marathon, if you will. In other words, it is a race that needs to be run with perseverance. It is not a race that can be run as a sprint. Ask anyone who has ever run a marathon, particularly somebody who ran it just to say that they did, not because they were particularly athletic or gifted and that it was a natural progression of a career of running, but an amateur. But ask anyone like that what it was like, and you'll hear stories of this mythical idea of the wall, this place that you hit somewhere between 20 and 22 miles where your body, your mind just overtakes your body and there's this incredible resistance. And it's in this moment that you have to find inspiration to push through this wall in order to reach the prize at the end. Well, the writer of Hebrews understood this, and it was this idea that he was trying to share with this early audience, encouraging them to find the inspiration, the motivation to push through the wall that they were experiencing. He didn't want them to give up because they were so close. So where were they to find the inspiration to push through? So one of the ideas that we see in verse one is where, where the writer says, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Who are these witnesses that the writer is referring to? Well, going back to our early verses, we start with Moses. Uh, then we get into talking about some of the other heroes, people like David and the prophets. And so the writer is reminding 
his audience that this is really a relay race. Uh, others have run it before them, and they're now simply handing the baton off. It's their time to take the baton and run the race. Notice it says, run the race that is set before you, implying that we don't get to choose the race any more than those who came before us. Not all of these heroes named would have had worldly or earthly success. In fact, we hear about torture and hardship and death, and we realize that this race is not a race that can be evaluated based on human ideas. Another idea for inspiration that the writer shares is to keep their eyes firmly on the finish line, the prize. Talks about keep your eyes looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. And so one of the ways to be able to persevere in this race is to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, who also experienced the hardships and the trials of this earthly experience and was able to persevere enduring shame and crucifixion in order to be perfected. We too are to look to Jesus for that inspiration to keep going. Now, if you ask anyone who's ever run a marathon or any type of endurance race, one of the things you'll find is they are absolute masters of what to carry with them and what to leave behind. They understand equipment. And our writer here says, let us also lay aside every weight in the sin that clings so closely. To be able to finish an endurance race, equipment is everything. If we carry too much stuff, it weights us down and it can be the difference between completing the race and not completing the race. So what are these things for you and I today that we need to take note of that are the things that weight us down in this journey, this race that we must persevere? Well, for starters, it's the other gods in our life. You know what they are. It's the gods of career, of money, of power, of family, of recreation, pleasure. You know, we have these other gods. And, and one of the things that the writer reminds us to is that we need to get rid of the other gods in our life. Another idea would be busyness. You know, we are very busy people and often we confuse happiness and success with being busy. Nothing can be further than the truth. We crowd so many things into our schedule that it weights us down. We think it'll make us happy and it'll satisfy us, but ultimately it only simply weighs us down. So getting rid of the busyness in our lives. And then what about possessions? We're hoarders. We're people who just we're enamored by our possessions and we keep adding and adding and adding. One of the things that, that we need to be careful of is being weighted down by our possessions. So other gods, busyness, possessions, perhaps we should try to do half as much and do it twice as well. Or perhaps we should learn that anytime we're going to say yes to something new, we need to say no to something old. So, in summary, what can you and I take from this passage of Scripture this morning? Well, we're reminded this morning that we don't get to choose the race. We simply get to choose how we're going to run it, just like Jesus. He's our model for this. He didn't choose the race. He chose how he was going to run it. And so there we need to find our inspiration. Secondly, we need to remember that we're in a relay race, and those who've come before us have passed the baton to us. This is our leg in the race. You know, as parents... We're running a leg in the race for our children to observe because at some point we hand the baton to them and they hand the baton on to their next generation. We all are modeling, the, and, and as, we, as we follow those models, we're to be reminded there's a great cloud of witnesses standing around ready to cheer us on. We're also reminded that we need to be careful about what we carry on this journey. We need to make sure that we're not weighted down and so we need to simplify our life. Well, I hope you have found some joy and blessing in this scripture text this morning. I hope the book of Hebrews, as we've continued to study it, has been uh, a source of encouragement for you as it was intended to be for the original audience. Uh, we're going to be back again next week with more, one more lesson from Hebrews. I hope you'll be back to join us then. Until then, have a great week. God bless you. See you next time.